Yesterday, we broke the story of allegations made in newly unsealed court documents relating to Jeffrey Epstein, which claimed sex tapes were taken of public figures, including Prince Andrew, Bill Clinton and Sir Richard Branson. There's now a statement from the Virgin Group on behalf of Sir Richard Branson, which is relevant to that, and says Sarah Ransom's claims are baseless and unfounded. It points out that Ransom also admitted in a New Yorker report in 2019 that she had invented the tapes in order to draw attention to Epstein's behaviour. Moving on now, the Sussexes are in danger of running out of money as their revenue streams in the US dry up. Well, biographer Tom Bauer says Harry and Meghan have failed in Hollywood and are struggling to find new means of income after losing their £19 million Spotify deal and being labelled grifters by one of the company's executives. There are reports the couple's £40 million Netflix deal is now also on the rocks due to a lack of new ideas. While the Sussex's star is seemingly fading stateside, their sister-in-law, the Princess of Wales, is celebrated by the royal family on social media as she marks her 42nd birthday today. I'm joined live in the studio now by Talk TV's Royal Editor Sarah Hewson. Lovely to see you. And, you and Happy New Year. Yes. Happy Shall we New Year. start? Why don't we start with with birthday greetings and, and congratulations to the Princess of Wales, 42 today. 42 today and a rather happier birthday than it was this time last year, which was just around the time of the publication of Spare and the allegations claimed in that about that big fallout between Meghan and Kate. Uh, this time a rather more relaxing birthday for her, uh, expecting her to be spending it at Windsor. The children are still on school holidays, they're back at school today, so a family day uh, for the Princess of Wales. We had a previously unseen picture of her released by uh, the royal family on Twitter today by the King and Queen's own Twitter account uh, and that shows her behind the scenes at the coronation, mm -hmm. uh, a picture taken by the royal photographer uh, Chris Jackson and uh, Westminster Abbey also posted a photograph of her wishing her a happy birthday uh, saying uh, and that was showing her walking into her Christmas concert at Westminster Abbey. The bells of Westminster Abbey rang out uh, at one o'clock to mark her birthday, her charities have all been uh, putting out statements uh, celebrating her birthday, but I think it is one that she will be quite relieved to be spending quietly and privately with her family and um, a little less drama, perhaps, than 2023. I mean, there is a phrase that's often used about her, and it is that she hasn't put a foot wrong. And I would just like to say that in the public eye, it's enormously difficult to earn that phrase and that praise because, you know, you're under such scrutiny. One look, one word, one failure to look, one failure to shake a hand. You know, there's, there are so many opportunities for somebody to make a mistake, be considered to have done something inappropriate or wrong. And she has managed really to carry off this role with such charm and grace, hasn't she? Such a smile enthusiasm, politeness, kind of understatedness, never looking as if she wants the limelight, but, but, but looking happy in it, and happy enough to make other people happy to see her. I mean, I think she's pulled off the most incredible feat. And, and it's not a role she was born into. No. This is something she's had to learn over the years. And she's not necessarily comfortable with the limelight, but she has had to adjust uh, and uh, she has really found her place now and found her role. And I think she very much does look like a queen in waiting. Yes. But because of what you say, Vanessa, about her never having put a, a, a foot wrong, I think that is why the end of last year with the publication of Endgame and the allegations that were made in that, mm -hmm. uh, Kate being named uh, as uh, being one of those involved in the, the royal racism around now, uh, according to Omid Scoby uh, in his book, that will have been extremely difficult uh, for her. And yet she carried on. She hosted her Christmas uh, carol concert. She attended the diplomatic reception at Buckingham Palace, for example. And for her, uh, it is all about duty. And that is a lesson, you know, she will have learned a lot from the from late the queen. queen. I knew you were going to say from the late yeah. queen. Let's talk about Harry and Meghan and their financial mm. situation. I mean, we don't have to organise a whip round in the office right now for them, do we? It's no, not that no, urgent. I, I, don't, I don't think they're exactly <laughs> on the bread. No, line. not on I, I mean, this, this is a claim made by Tom Bauer, um, who I think it's fair to say is no fan of Harry and Meghan, who, who wrote the book uh, Revenge uh, about the uh, couple, but he talks about their finances, having lost that Spotify uh, deal. Uh, he suggests that the Netflix deal is in jeopardy. That's something that Netflix themselves have said, no, isn't the case. They have no plans to end their partnership with them. And actually, they, they came up with the most sensational Netflix documentary mm. uh, that uh, of the previous year. Um, but look, things have not been easy for Harry and Meghan. And I think 
think trying to find financial independence has been much harder than they might have anticipated. Megan signed a new contract in the spring of last year with the talent agency WME. We haven't yet seen anything come out of that. In November, she was on the red carpet and she talked about exciting projects to come and how she and Harry were both really excited about what was to come, but she couldn't reveal it. Um, we haven't heard any more. We, we've heard that. a speculation, haven't we, that she might have a, uh, you know, an Instagram, a blog, a social media empire, a little bit like Martha Stewart's, a little bit like Gwyneth Paltrow's, that kind of a thing. But we haven't really seen that either. We have haven't we? seen that. And then we've had talk about some kind of feel good enterprise that she might be uh, going into. We, we don't know what she's going to do. So she wasn't on the red the carpet coffee. at the Golden Globes with her former no. Suits co-stars. They said, well, we don't have her number uh, to invite her. But it has been difficult. I mean, if you think about the, the jokes being made on their on, at their expense at the Golden Globes, you know, being paid millions for, mm. for doing nothing, mm. for example, that the subject of jokes on Family Guy, on South Park last year, that isn't the way they wanted things to go. And financially, it has been much, much harder. They've done these commercial deals because they needed the money. Uh, they want to launch a big life in California. We know that they've got very high security costs. Prince Harry, of course, has had his legal fees uh, as well to be dealing with. But it isn't as easy uh, to come up with the goods as perhaps they might have thought it. Was. Sarah, thank you very much indeed.